going to have you, uh, I'm guessing that a lot of folks hear Texan by nature and, and wonder what we are. Um, in 2011, um, Mrs. Laura Bush founded uh, this organization to unite business and conservation leaders who believe that the, our state's prosperity was dependent on the conservation of our natural resources. Our focus at Texan by Nature is to amplify projects and activate new investments in conservation that return benefits for people, prosperity, and natural resources. So we kind of operate in that nexus. All right, Dang, now keeping y'all awake. So the project background, how we got to the project now, I want to briefly go over kind of how we got there. And in 2017, we had a project that was funded by the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation that to host a monarch symposium that brought together about 200 people from 75 different organizations in Texas and Oklahoma to discuss um, the status of efforts being conducted in those two states for monarch conservation. And in that meeting, we ended up with about 125 pages worth of notes, and we milled those down and created what we call the straw man document. And from that, there were two reoccurring themes that kept occurring throughout that entire two-day symposium. It was one, the native seed supply and demand. Um, there was a lot of talk in the room about what comes first, you know, the chicken or the egg. Is there not enough demand for it, or is the supply not there? The other uh, issue was the potential for right-of-ways. That was another prevalent theme throughout that, that project in that meeting. When we ended that project, we just couldn't get it out of our heads, this potential for right-of-ways in Texas, along with that seed supply and demand. And do the right-of-ways play a, a portion of that role in the seed supply and demand, spurring it? And so we got to thinking about our rights-of-way in Texas. And this is just an estimate of our rights-of-ways. But if you look at kind of the pipelines, the roads, the railways, railways and transmission lines, we have about 594,000 miles. If you consider a uh, width of an easement of somewhat to be 200, I know that's a little bit sometimes big, maybe uh, even if it's 100, you're still looking at 14.4 million acres. The potential in Texas is huge for conservation. It is estimated by USGS that Texas has about uh, currently 7 million acres of protected land. So even if we look at right-of-ways, and our goal is we can only get to maybe first converting 50% of those to native habitat for pollinators, it's still doubling our already protected areas in Texas. So we, as we were thinking through that process, we began um, having talks with EOG Resources, an oil and gas company that is doing a lot of work in the Eagleford Shell in Texas. And they were wanting to look at how to extend not just to monarchs but to pollinators and what they could do to be part of that effort. So together with us, as well as funding from Stillwater Foundation, along with, again, another grant from National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, um, we received a grant to create 350 acres of native habitat on their pad sites and right-of-ways within that Eagleford shell. Um, the 350 acres is the primary focus, but as we moved along, I started thinking that um, the report, uh, or to bring people together to talk about it. So we had a leadership roundtable in January. We just finished it. I am now again compiling the notes. That's a huge feat if you've, if you've ever want something really tedious, do that. But the report that we created um, is helping us drive this project forward. So we're using the information in January. Um, we're starting the project. We'll start doing um, native seed restoration on their pad site. But our bigger goal is, is to change the way that they do their operating procedures for pad sites. When they downsize, there's a picture there, when they downsize those pad sites, if each of those pad sites could be converted to native habitat, it would create, and it reminded me kind of uh, Chip Taylor's uh, image that he had earlier, of those little bitty squares staggering on those uh, tribal lands. It's the same concept. If you look at Texas and aerial uh, photography and a lot of those high petroleum areas, it's a, created a dense network of pad sites that would create a nice corridor for um, those species. So that's our hope for this project. It's 350 acres of habitat, but our bigger goal is to really work with EOG to figure out how they have to change their operating procedures, um, what that looks like, what percentage of their right-of-ways we can get to, and then to share that with others that were in attendance at that leadership roundtable from industry um, landowners and things like that. 
So that's our project. Any questions whatsoever? I don't even know if we have time. I went over just a little bit. Yeah. 